Hey everybody, it's Efren of Real Pastors and we are back with another video just for you. And if you saw our last video where we were able to review Ghostbusters Afterlife for you, what you've noticed is that we have been gone a while and life had gotten in the way. So we have done a lot of things since then and we were just trying to catch up right now. So we wanted to do Ghostbusters Afterlife. And during this hiatus, Gary and I still were able to watch plenty of movies. We just didn't have the opportunity to review them yet again because life was getting in the way. There was a lot going on this past fall semester, if you will, during this time. There was a lot going on there, so we were not able uh, to be on here as much. So what we want to do today is we are going to have rapid reviews. And essentially what we're going to do is we are going to talk about all these movies that we were able to see and we're going to go through it back to back to back give you our ratings and then let you know what we thought of them and what we would like to do is you if you have already seen these movies we would like for you to leave a comment down below so that you're able to tell us your thoughts on these movies and we can further talk about it and depending on what happens maybe some of these movies we'll want to dig into a little deeper later and Maybe when we get the physical copy or something like that. But if not, uh, but we'd like to hear from you guys. And then if we do that, we see your comments. We'll be able to bring your comments into that show so we can hear from you guys what you thought of some of these movies. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to start off because there's a couple that I was able to see that Gary was not able to see. So I'm going to go ahead and hit those up with just me. I'll let you know my thoughts. I'll let you know because some of these were family movies. I took my kids. I'll let you know some of my kids' thoughts about these. And then we will bring Gary in so we can talk about the ones that we were both able to see. And uh, pretty much all of them I think we saw together except for one. But we will dig into that. And so first one, uh, first one up is uh, that, we are, that we are going to talk about is the movie Dune. And this movie, and I'm sorry, I'm trying to bring up the the picture here for you, you know, the one I was able to grab. So here we go. So the movie Dune, right? And and so this movie, we I went into it, honestly, I knew nothing about this. Of course, once it came out, then I was able to figure out that uh, that this movie was a, a, a sci-fi novel, uh, probably the and what I hear, the, the godfather of sci-fi, the original a novel that had to do with this whole science fiction realm. And then there was a movie that was made in the 80s, I suppose, about it. And, uh, oh, I just realized the poster I grabbed is in Japanese or Chinese or something. Anyways, um, so what ends up happening with uh, well, with that, it gets, it gets that movie. I uh, heard the movie was actually pretty long. And then uh, it is now being remade. And so this movie, again, we're going to try to keep things rapid. Um, it is a very long movie, but it is long with a purpose. I enjoyed this movie very much. I thought there was a lot of good to it. The visuals were phenomenal. The scale and scope was huge. Um, the actors, everyone you see on that page, uh, on the picture was absolutely phenomenal. They owned it. Uh, it was great. The main character there in the middle, uh, Timothy Chalamet, I don't know how to say his name. I thought he carried his role perfectly. Um, he did a great job. The storytelling is absolutely phenomenal as well. Um, I truly loved what this, the story, how it was being told. And I thought it was really great. And uh, this is one that it is probably going down as one of my favorite movies of the year. Uh, towards the end of the year, we'll do an episode of what we think was the best movie of the year. This is definitely in that conversation. Um, I enjoyed it a whole lot. There's just so much to talk about. This is one that I may want to do a further video later, maybe when Gary sees it so we can dive into it more in depth, but I can't speak enough about this movie. Um, so this is one that I would definitely 100% recommend. So again, Hail Mary, here we go. Uh, trying to keep things quick. I give this one four out of five Hail Marys. I know I said a lot of great things about it, um, but probably the biggest problem that I have, probably the two biggest, well, the biggest problem I have is that the way this movie ends uh, it's pretty like, like this isn't like a spoiler, but it is pretty like it just ends. Um, you can tell that this is supposed to be a two part movie. This is a longer story to tell. And instead of like having like what some sequels do, like you have the movie and the movie, it comes to an end. That part of the story is told is over, but you can tell there's more to tell. No, this one is just like it felt like boom, right in half. So it's kind of hard to give it a five because I feel like I still haven't seen the full movie yet. And so, but what I have seen of it, it definitely gets a four. Highly recommend. Uh, this is one you should definitely go to see. And so, and so, yes, yeah, so that one, oh man, my bad. So that one, uh, definitely go see. It is great and it is awesome. Uh, the next one up is that 
that I was able to see that unfortunately uh, Gary was not able was not able to see is the movie called Ron Gone Wrong. And Ron's Gone Wrong, uh, this was one that, hey, it was an animated movie. It looks like a family movie. This is something that I want to take the kids to. And we went in, and if you've seen the trailers, this is pretty much about like, it, it'd be the equivalent of kids all getting their cell phones, right? Um, you had this bot that that can connect people with them, connect them on social media. Uh, it's the way kids and everyone can get connected to the world around them. It helps them make friends. It helps them uh, communicate with others. And, and so pretty much he gets it, but, and unfortunately Ron, him and his family, uh, you know, they're, they're poor they're, They don't have the same kind of money as everybody else. He wants one. He feels left out because everyone in school has one. And then, so his dad gets his hands on, on one of them and, and it ends up being broken. It comes out of the box. It comes that he is not functioning properly. There's a lot of things wrong with him. Um, and so Ron ends up still befriending him and still wanting to to have his bot for himself because dad's was like hey we can take it back because he's broken and i don't want to say why he's broken that's kind of part of the story and it could be a big spoiler but um but what you end up seeing is this beautiful like relationship between the two and what it means to be a true friend and it also deals with some issues of how like kids can over the years as they grow up end up drifting apart they could be great friends when they were younger and just the importance of friendship the importance of community and the importance of family and so this was one that was actually i was surprised on how good this movie actually was um because i didn't know much going into it it was very entertaining my kids as well loved this movie they laughed a lot there was a lot in this movie to laugh at there's a lot of comedy a lot of heart um so this was to me like a surprise movie that came out and i was very uh very, very happy with it and thought it was very good. And so my kids, again, also were, were very pleased with Ron's Gone Wrong. And so um, so this is one, like, there's still some things about it. You know, there's still a couple tropes. There's still a couple things with it that it just felt like, okay, like, I've seen this before. I know where this is going. I appreciate the heart and the message um, behind it. But, it. but other than how they told the story, there wasn't much different about the story. Like, you could see where it's going from a mile away. So this is one that if I'm going to rate and here we are with our Hail Marys, I would give it a three. It's a good movie. It's good. It's fun. It's good for the kids. Um, a good family movie to watch if you want something heartfelt and funny, um, things like that. So this is one I definitely would recommend. Yeah, you should check out. Um, if you if you don't want to rush to the theater, hey, I understand. If you're just like, I'll wait to rent it or watch it on whatever streaming service it probably already is on by now. Um, go ahead and check it out. It's definitely worth watching. Uh, it gets a three out of five Hail Marys for me, but that one, uh, that's, that's the one that I think, yeah, it was a surprise, a surprise to all, to all of us. Um, and so we have one more, uh, family movie actually that I was able to watch with the kids that unfortunately Gary has not been able to watch yet. Maybe, maybe he'll go check it out. We'll see. Um, but it's the movie uh, Encanto. And this is, uh, one that I actually was able to see. I, w I went to um, Burbank, California, you know, next to LA, all that stuff, um, where my sister lives. We were with her for Thanksgiving. So I took me, and my mom, I took my girls, I took my niece and we went and we watched this movie. And, uh, first and foremost, I want to say we watched this movie in Adobe theater. And that was the first time I saw something in Adobe theater. And let me tell you, Adobe theater was awesome. Um, the visual, the, the visuals, the, like the quality of the picture was great. Very crisp. The sound was awesome. Um, just the whole environment, even like the, the walkway going into the Dolby was just awesome. Everything, they, everything about the theater is really, really cool. And it's one that we saw this in it. And it was, again, it was great, but it's one that I would love to get back to watch like a Spider-Man No Way Home or or a dune i would love to watch a movie like that in there because the screen is also huge i don't sure if it's as big as an imax theater but it's but it's pretty close it's pretty big um so it was awesome so maybe that helped with part of this experience but with encanto you had the story of <clears throat> this family that is enchanted and the reason why the story became enchanted um is actually pretty heartfelt and uh but you have one mirabel which is the main character you see right in front up there is that she's the only one who doesn't have a gift and how that ends up playing into everything going on with everything, everyone around her having a gift, but she doesn't have one. And what that means for the family, the tension, the dynamics, the conflict. And then um, it gets to a point where you see in the trailers, something's gone wrong with, uh, you know, with the miracle, with uh, them all being enchanted and someone losing powers. What is happening? 
And then so you have this great, again, story about family and the importance of family and everyone's different roles and how different people are in the family. And so it actually has some good things. There were some things in it that I thought was a little bit preachy at times. Um, but unfortunately, you know, with, with some of Disney movies and Pixar movies, they're starting, you know, they're starting to get a little preachy on a couple things. Um, this one, it wasn't that terrible, but it had some moments where I kind of rolled my eyes and I was like, okay, this, this part of the story really isn't that important you just wanted to preach you can still tell this awesome story without some of these things in it and again i'm not saying what they are because it could be spoilers um, for you if you have not seen Encanto yet but um but yeah so but overall it still was a pretty good movie uh the visuals were great i mean it was absolutely gorgeous to look at the voice acting uh was was great as well and uh, and the story overall was a good story um probably like i said there were just some things that were a little bit too preachy. That was like, I mean, you still could have had a fantastic movie without those things. Um, but this was good. My kids, they loved it. Um, with it being about a Colombian family, you know, set in, set in Colombia, you know, Hispanics. So you had a lot of the Hispanic music. You had a lot of, you know, you did have Spanish and things. You have a lot of that Hispanic culture that was in it, especially Colombian culture, which I thought was really awesome and really a lot of fun, which my, my kids and my niece enjoyed a lot as well. They had fun. They were dancing in their seats and things like that. So it was... It was a lot of fun to see that aspect and that brought out there as well. Um, so if I was going to come in and rate this movie also, um, again, like it was a lot of fun. It was kind of beat by beat of normal Pixar stuff with some preachy things. I would come in with it as a three as well. Um, it wasn't bad. It just, I know I just thought it could have been a little bit better, but it still was fun. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. The story was good. Um, the kids loved it. So that's why I would give this a three and say it's definitely worth checking out. Um, if you do check it out, I would suggest Adobe Theater because where this movie is so colorful and so bright and has so much fun and music, it's probably worth checking out. If you have Adobe Theater near you, that's what I would do. Um, so, so that's what we have there with, with Encanto. And then now we're moving into the area where Gary has actually been able to watch some of these other movies. And so we have seen that. And now I'm going to bring our good man Gary back into this. Hello, Gary. You are muted, good sir. <laughs> you are still muted. Can I unmute you for you? Uh oh, Gary's been having some issues with his computer, ladies and gentlemen. So we apologize for this. And uh, he's trying to figure it out. Ah, yeah. there we are. There he is. Yeah. Hi, hi, friends. Hello, Efren. Uh, I now know what it means when I hear the FOMO, uh, fear of missing out, because uh, <laughs> I, I listen to you and uh, very well done. Uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, yeah. Not only did I not seen any of those movies, but I've yet to experience the Dolby Theater. I hope to one day. That's yeah. a great Michael Scott once said. Yes. Uh, but nevertheless, glad to be here on this episode as we talk about some movies we finally get to talk about. Yes. And uh, hopefully we'll get you to that Dolby Theater, Gary. Because um, personally, I'm thinking like, you know, I know we have tickets to see Spider-Man because Gary's the man. I couldn't do it. Gary hey, figured it out. Hey, he my, got tickets for us. It's my thank dog. You, sir. Thank you, sir. My dog. My dog. Yeah, thank you, Cash, as well. Yeah. But, uh, and, you know, we're going to a normal theater, but maybe it might be worth the drive to Raleigh just to see a Dolby Theater and watch Spider-Man. We'll see. Oh, maybe, yeah. Maybe yeah, we'll make that, that happen. Yeah, we're doing that for sure. Yeah. So, so here we go. So here we have... Um, so continuing in our in our rapid reviews and with movies that Gary was also able to see. <clears throat> and uh, and the first one up that I mean, I don't know if this is the right time frame, but the first one up that we'll talk about um, here is No Time to Die, 007. Mm -hmm. And um, this is one that Gary and I both were actually very excited for. Mm -hmm. And um, and I know there was a lot of nonsense stirring around it about what they're going to do with James Bond, blah, blah, blah. Um, but you know what? I've talked enough. Gary, how about you go ahead and lead us off here? Good, sir. Well, I first want to say I'm not the biggest James Bond fan. Um, I don't know a whole lot of the lore. Um, I've seen uh, a few of the movies, the Pierce Brothers and Days. Uh, my biggest fandom of James Bond is I love the movie Casino Royale. And uh, the other Daniel Craig Bonds, not so much. Um, so I was kind of like looking forward to this a little bit just because I love the trailers. And it took so long to see it. Uh, but I'm happy to say that I thoroughly enjoyed this James Bond movie. Um, not quite as much as Casino Royale, but this one's right there underneath it. Um, I think, Efren, you said it best after you saw this movie because you saw it before me and then you went back to see it with me because you're a good friend. Um, and uh, this Daniel Craig uh, era of Bond movies started well and is continuing well with this movie. Um, mm -hmm. 
This movie didn't waste any time, which I was very happy about because these types of movies, they seem to drag to me, even though there's mm-hmm. a lot of action. But the explanation of things just seems to take forever. But this movie, it's, it just takes right off and throws you right back in this world. And it handled it really well. Daniel Craig was great as James Bond. The supporting cast was great. And Rami Malek, Freddie Mercury himself, was a great villain. So, mm-hmm. And then you got uh, Christoph Waltz coming back in there too as well, who I'm a fan of him in anything. Yeah, yeah, I know, and I, and I agree with pretty much everything you said. I thought um, this was really great. I know, I know the stuff surrounding it had a lot to do with, you know, the political side of things and what they're doing with Bond and are they going to have a female Bond, blah, blah. And I will say, if you haven't seen that, it, it's not what any of that nonsense was about. Thank mm-hmm. God. Uh, it, re- it really wasn't. I, I, I thought they handled it very well. I thought the way they did it made a lot of sense. Um, when you watch the whole story. And again, not much, it's hard to say because if we talk about any point, like even the very beginning, it's a huge spoiler. So it's hard to like yeah. say any of that. And I know this movie's been out for a while, but maybe we can dig into it later. But I thought it did a really good job. And I thought it had, honestly, a very fitting ending <laughs> to yeah. this whole Daniel Craig, James Bond. I thought, I was like, you know what? That That is how this should end. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought it was pretty good. And, and what you said about dragging, I felt a couple parts were a little draggy. Um, I think this movie probably could have benefited from being maybe 15 minutes shorter Mm -hmm. and still a lot of the stuff would have done well, maybe even 20 minutes shorter because this movie was like almost three hours. It was a long Um, movie, yeah. Yeah, so I I think there was a lot of stuff they could have cut out and it still would have made perfect sense. So Mm -hmm. it was a little draggy at times, but um, I do think this was in the whole Daniel Craig saga, I do think this was the second best one to Casino Royale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no doubt. And speaking of Dragon, you got to remember, I didn't see the last Bond movie. I watched a, I did the wrong thing. I watched a quick uh, recap of it because people were like, yeah, you don't need to see it. Uh, yeah. But the last time I was in the Bond world was Skyfall. And that movie ended like nine times before it was over. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> compared to that, I feel like this one was a rapid pace. Yeah, that's true. That's, that is very true. Um, so yeah, so that was very true. That, that makes sense. So Gary, let's go ahead and rate this bad boy. Uh, what, you, what you giving... Why don't you give it no time to die? I'll give it my hats off rating of four out of five. All right. He's giving it the four out of five. Um, so I, next Casino Royale. Yeah. And that's probably the only two movies you really need. Um, you might be a little lost, but it's probably the only two that you really need. Um, I, uh, yeah, lost. I know, right? Um, yeah, I'm with you. I'll probably keep it at a four as well. I mean, there wasn't enough wrong with it. I felt it was a little draggy, but other than that, I didn't think there's enough wrong with it to bring it down to a three. I would keep it. Keep it at his four as well. Um, thought No Time to Die was was great. You know, a lot of fun to watch. I thought it was great storytelling. Um, honestly, if they would have just done like Casino Royale and then maybe a better version of um, Spectre or something like that, um, probably Spectre, did a better version of Spectre and then had this, it would have been a great trilogy. Mm-hmm. You know, you still had to fix Spectre, but it could have been a great trilogy and you would have been done. Um because, yeah, the other two definitely were not very good. Um, but, yeah, so four out of five, I 100% agree. And I thought that one was great. So moving right along um, to the next one, because, again, trying to keep things rapid here. Rapid, is rapid. Yeah, rapid reviews rapid. is um, one that we didn't know we were going to be able to see, but we ended up to work it out and being able to see together is yeah. Venom, Let There Be Carnage. And... Um, Honestly, Gary, I was very excited uh, mm-hmm. that this was coming out. I was one that I enjoyed the first one. I know the first one was kind of a mixed bag, um, probably because the first one itself is a mixed bag because I'll be honest, the first half of the of Venom was kind of dull and boring. And I'm like, can we get to the Venom part? But then once Venom shows up, the first one was a whole lot of fun and I loved it. Um, so I was very excited for this one. And of course, they're bringing in Carnage. And um, this was one, probably the best way to describe it is just, it's just a dumb, fun movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, it really is. Like, to me, it was like I didn't go into expecting it to be Oscar worthy or anything like that. I just wanted to see more fun, Eddie and Venom going back and forth, having the fun of the you know of the fights between Carnage and things like that. Um, so I was really looking forward to that. And of course, this being in the Spider realm, uh, you know, I, I I love Venom as a villain, and so there's a lot there that I liked. Um, so I thought a lot of it was really fun. Probably some of the things I didn't care for, Gary, was um, I felt it took a little too long for Venom and Carnage to meet and to fight. Um, I thought the stuff with Carnage was cool. I thought the stuff with Eddie 
and Cletus Cassidy played by Woody Harrelson, who always does a great job, especially playing crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I thought all oh, that was cool, but it was like, man, I want a little bit more Venom and Carnage action. Um, but the thing is, Carnage looked awesome. The stuff he did was cool. Venom looked great. Like a lot of the stuff. I mean, it was a great, fun movie. Um, but again, I think this the comic book ness in me was like, I wanted a little more out of it. But this also was a movie that was 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. Like they were trying to get to the point fast. Um, you could tell they're building up to things. So there wasn't like, they. this is what I appreciate. Andy Serkis knew the movie he was making. Yeah. Which I think made it a whole lot better, even though there were things that I still had some gripes and stuff about. What did you think, Gary? I had a lot of fun with this movie. Um, I don't know as much about the character as you do uh, when mm-hmm. it comes to comics and all that. Um, but people who don't like this version of Venom, I just want to say, hey, go watch Spider-Man 3 and then oh, come gosh. back to it. Um, you know, I'm a big Tom Hardy fan. And my favorite thing about the first one was the banter between Venom mm-hmm. and Eddie, uh, Eddie Brock. And this movie gave us a lot more than that. Um, a lot more of that. And uh, so that made me really enjoy the movie. A lot of laughable moments, a lot of really cool scenes. And mm-hmm. Woody Harrelson is great in a lot of stuff. He is that, uh, you know, um, guy you throw him, throw him into a movie, whether it's a serious role or a funny role, he, he can pretty much do a lot of things. And you said it best. He plays crazy really well. And mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if you ever saw this. He, he, it was almost reprising a role that I saw a long time ago. Uh, BC Gary watched it. Um, natural born killers he was almost re- reprising that role a little bit yeah, um, yeah. in a uh, pg-13 level thankfully um mm-hmm. but uh but yeah so however i will say um i think the runtime was an issue for me um mm-hmm. i appreciate it being uh 90 minutes because if you remember back in that day when we saw it i needed to go to work and yeah. so i literally left the theater and went straight to the school i worked at and uh but i, I really felt like it could have used about 20 more minutes of mm-hmm. carnage venom on screen uh, maybe flesh mm-hmm. out the characters a little bit more um but nevertheless it was a fun movie and a uh, solid sequel and mm-hmm. uh i will say one of the best um post credit scenes i've seen in a really long time oh yeah 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 and it like and, and you're right like there should have been more fleshed out character and stuff and and that's where the 90 minutes you could feel like them just rushing through it yeah. um but but i think it was one of those things i don't know maybe Maybe Andy Serkis and you know didn't truly understand the characters that he's dealing with. Um, maybe yeah. you know I know Tom Hardy has a little bit more connection with the Venom stuff. Um, so I, again, I don't know what all played into it, but I agree. Like because you did, you're introducing, you know, Cletus Cassidy. You're introducing Carnage, who's you know it's his own character, and then you also have Shriek, which is the girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Um, so like you have this whole element, which they told. It's like they told enough of the story for you to know, okay, I know what's going on, but they didn't want to dive too into it because it seemed like they really wanted to keep that 90 minute time frame yeah. for some reason, um, which it did makes it feel like a little rush. Like, I, I think I'm with you, like a little bit more character development, maybe mm-hmm. one more fight between Venom and Carnage. And then uh, like it fleshed out a little bit more because probably the thing I didn't care for um, was I felt like, at the, the kind of like what they do with couples and in, in movies and sequels, a couple will get together and then the sequel, the only thing they have to do is to break them up so they can have like this development through the movie. I kind of felt like Eddie Brock and Venom kind of went back to square one, even mm-hmm. though they kind of had this understanding at the end of the first one. So I thought yeah. that that's where I was like, this is kind of weird. I don't care for that. Um, and then the whole thing with, well, this whole thing with Carnage, like if you know the comics, the reason why Carnage is so dangerous is because Cletus Cassidy and the symbiote are so in sync because they both are just homicidal maniacs. Hmm. And so that's what made him so much stronger than Venom. And you don't see that kind of connection. You -hmm. see it a little bit, but you don't see that level of connection, which made it like, as a comic fan, like you kind of missed the boat there, which probably would have made the fight with Venom a little better. Yeah. Um, So that's where I think maybe Tom Hardy or maybe, uh, especially maybe um, Andy Serkis didn't quite understand the characters they were, they were making the movie of. Yeah, possibly. And you remind me of something that I, I remembered um, talking about the, the split, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was There was a scene there where it was kind of weird and kind of awkward. Um, I don't know much about the character comics, like I said, but I was just kind of like, this just seems kind of forced. And, and I think it only felt that way because it didn't have more time. If that possibly. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe we're saying, maybe I'm saying that because I watch, I, I binge a lot, a lot, uh, I binge a lot of TV shows with my wife. So watching TV shows, you get ten hours to flesh out characters. Mm-hmm. 
Andy Serkis had 90 minutes to flesh out characters. And if he was controlling that 90 minutes, he did the best he could. And yeah. what that did a big, great job. So, but I would like a little bit more time. Yeah. That's, that's really my only gripe with the movie. Yeah, I agree. Like, listen, 90 minutes, just to put into context, is an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. So, like, even if they would have gotten closer to two hours, if they went an hour 45 or just stopped it right at two hours, I think it would have benefited a lot. But that's, you know, it sounds like that's yeah. us, you know. Yeah. Um, and I guess of what I'd rather is suffer from sequelitis where it would be like two hours, 45 mm -hmm. minutes or way too much. Or yeah. this, I guess I'd choose the 90 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, so. definitely better than sequelitis. I agree. Yeah. Um, so this one, I guess I'll go first on this one. Um, like I said, we have our gripes. You've heard it all. Um, but it's still like a lot of fun. You know, it comes out on uh, physical media next week. Uh, I want the steelbook copy from Best Buy um, mm -hmm. because it looks awesome. But uh, I, I still give it three out of five. A lot of fun. Still had some issues, as you guys heard. But still definitely worth it. And still, like you said, a worthy sequel to the first. Yeah. Folks, I promise there'll be a day when we disagree on something, but not today, apparently. Just leave the three up there. I'll give it my solid right. review of three. It'll be on the shelf next to the uh, Venom steelbook that I have. Um, it comes out next week, you said? Yes. Yep, right, Tuesday. On. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so yeah, I'll definitely be picking it up. And uh, yeah, fun movie. Check it out. Yeah, perfect. So, that's, so there you go. So you got uh, three there, and then I'm trying to look at my notes here. Do we have – oh, we have one more that's going to be a little – I feel a little silly, but – we're doing it because, again, we're fathers and we did it. You know, we watched this movie for the children. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's and it's the movie um, Clifford the Big Red Dog. and the um, Big Red Dog. Yeah, the live action version. Now, I will say, yeah. like, I didn't mind when my kids were like, let's watch this. Because you know what? As a kid, I watched the cartoon series. Mm -hmm. I read the books. So it's yeah. like, sure, why not? Let's Voiced watch this Voiced by the late, thing. great John Ritter. Yes. Yes, rest, rest, his, rest his soul. Um, so, yeah, so this was one, you know, it, it got delayed. My kids were like, let's watch it. They couldn't wait. My kids love dogs. Your kids love dogs. Um, so couldn't wait to watch it. Gary, we'll let that you started off on this one, man. This is my Oscar pick of the year right here. <laughs> it's going to take home everything. Um, uh, no, my kids were so excited about this movie because mainly we pass a billboard in Winston-Salem every twice a day, every day. Mm -hmm with this movie being advertised and it was Clifford Clifford. When's that come out, daddy? When's that come out, daddy? And I was just like, it's in a couple weeks. So we, we sat and watched it. We didn't make it to the theater for this one, but we, we, we fired up our Paramount plus subscription and watched it uh, as a family around the uh, TV. And uh, it was very enjoyable, very fun. Um, had quite a few laughs that I didn't expect. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, my son has watched it probably nine times since then. Um, <laughs> he, he loves, he loves Clifford. And so does my daughter. But, uh, yeah, it's a great time. Great time for the kids. Great family movie. So. Yep. Yeah, it it is. It was uh, like we went to the theater. My parents were in town. Um, so we all went together. And um, my middle one, Nala, especially, she just was dying laughing through this whole thing. My youngest was laughing. And my oldest had moments of laughing. So it, it, it to me, this movie definitely skewed to the younger kids audience. Oh, yeah. Um, this, is, this is one like, like I said, like my oldest is 10. She had some chuckles and stuff, and she enjoyed it. But you can tell it was kind of like the Tom and Jerry movie. It was probably skewed a little bit more towards the younger end, where my middle's eight or seven, about to be eight, um, and five, and they loved it. Um, you know, there were moments I even laughed at certain moments, certain things I thought was pretty funny. Um, but it's definitely a family movie where it's going to be safe. You don't have to worry about anything. You'll have yeah. some laughs along the way. It's going to have its normal little kid jokes and stuff in it. But let's be real. Everyone in this movie, the people who made this movie, they knew what they were making and they didn't hide it, which I appreciate. I will always appreciate a movie more when they know what movie they're making and they're not trying to hide it. Yeah. Self-aware is a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, self-awareness. Um, yeah. I will say, though, my kids loved it. I, I enjoyed it. My wife enjoyed it. My dog did not like it. Um, <laughs> he thought it was very unrealistic and mm. somewhat offensive. I don't know what he meant by that. I'll ask him later. Maybe he can come on and talk about it. But uh you know, so well, he was probably just was, he was probably just jealous that. that Clifford got all that attention. Probably, you, you know, know. He, he can be that way. Yeah, uh, but yeah, check this movie out. You know, I'm, you know, watch it with your kids or nephews or younger siblings. It'd be weird if you watched it by yourself as an adult. True. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> yeah, you know. unless you're just obsessed with Clifford, I guess. That's yeah. I, yeah, mean, I get that. yeah. But other than that, like, yeah, this is one that. You don't go to this by yourself as an adult or an adult couple. Like, 
this one, a hundred percent. This is for the kids. I mean, for the kids. I mean, this the stories. Eh, you know, the story's fine. I guess like it. it like if you're trying to look at it as a movie lover, you probably mm-hmm. wouldn't love this movie because it's not like it's not like a good movie, if you will. Yeah. But but it's but it's a good family movie. Like you got kids, it's a good one to go to. Yeah, you know? I mean it's the premise we've seen a hundred times. Yeah. Kids, magic, and a bad tech guy who wants to take everything. You know. Yeah. Um, who the same guy? If you if you're familiar with the Chipmunk movies, he's it's the same bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> actor in in, in uh, I think Road yeah. Chip. You know. So. Yeah. Exactly. It, 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 Alvin and the Chipmunks. That is a perfect comparison for for this movie. It yep. really is. Um, wow. yeah. So then that's what this is. It's, it's made for the kids. Um, so Gary, I'm having a hard time rating this because like we kind of have a standard of rating. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I guess my question to you is for every, for everyone, are we going to rate this as, as like a family movie? Or are we going to rate this as normal movie standards? Cause like I mean, the other ones, the other ones we rated it as normal movie standards, Yeah. but this one's, I, I don't know. I'm having trouble cause it's, this isn't trying to be a good movie. It's just trying to be a good family movie. So I don't know yeah. how to rate it. Yeah, I mean, I think one day we'll look back and we'll it'll be the next uh, Citizen Kane. Um, <laughs> but right now, uh, I'm going to rate it as a family moving movie. And as a family movie, I'll give it a solid three out of five. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not one of those things that I'm going to look back and be like, hey, remember, like like when I saw the toy, when I saw Toy Story or when I first showed my kids Toy Story 3 or Big mm-hmm. Hero 6, I'm going to have fond memories of that. Not necessarily with this one, but like, yeah, man, the time I watched Clifford, they loved it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'll give it a three, solid. Yeah, maybe, maybe if you see it in the $5 bin or Black Friday, you might yeah. grab it because the kids like yeah. it, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so I guess, that, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at because it's like, if we're just going to rate on movie standards, this, movie is, this is probably a two. But mm-hmm. because like it's, you know, like it's not horrible, but it's not like, eh, but if it really is family movie standard, I'd probably give it a three because there are better family movies, mm-hmm. you know, out there. And, um, you know, where it's like, which I can Kanto, like I know I gave Encanto uh, a, a three, but the thing is, it's like that, that was trying to be something different. That was actually trying to be uh-huh. a good movie. It wasn't trying to like, yeah you know, be that. So, um, but as a family movie, yeah, it's three. Check it out if you mm-hmm. have the time you know, Paramount Plus, you know, it doesn't have to be in the theater. Um, this is one of those movies. So yeah, it's a good time. Good time with the kids. They'll be entertained. Order it's like, it's like someone said, they challenged someone said, hey, I bet you couldn't make a live action Clifford Big Red Dog movie. And the guy's like, hold my juice box. Oh Watch yeah. This. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Order yeah. me stuffed crust pizza because that's what you should eat with your family while watching this movie. Oh yeah, of course. Of yeah. course. So um, there you go. Yeah. So yeah. So, yeah. Clifford. Yeah. So there we go. Those are our rapid reviews of everything that we have, ladies and gentlemen. Think that they'll ever make all... live action movies from other like things we grew up with. Like you think we'll get a live action author or Bear- Berenstein, Berenstein Bears. The, Bear- the Berenstein Bears makes more sense. That was just but, those are, those are the books. Right? Yeah. I think they had a show. Did they? Either way. Okay. Yeah. Either way. I think, but that's that one makes more sense than Arthur. I will say that. Yeah. They, they're going to do a live action. That one would make more sense. Let's do um, a live action Magic School Bus. Oh, that would be cool. That actually would be really cool. That'd be pretty sick. That'd be pretty sick. Um, yeah. But those are what we have, ladies and gentlemen. Next mm-hmm. next week, as far as reviews go, we will get you the review of Spider Man No Way Home. We are watching it Thursday oh, night. Yes. And that's we next will. Week. That's next week. We are so excited about it. Uh, okay. I know. I know, my man. I know. So can't wait for that one. Um, we have more exciting stuff coming out. I mean, we got Matrix Resurrections coming out that we are looking forward to. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, honestly, for me, I enjoyed Sing. So Sing Two looks like fun. Yeah, Sing Two. I'll, I'll, I'll be taking yeah. my kids, so, so we'll be I. watching it. And, get them all uh, together for that one because mine are crazy excited for that. Might as well. You we <laughs> might as well all go together. When um, you want to hear the actual song from System of a Down? That is <laughs> I know. Yeah. Like in the trail, I'm like, just listen. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I anyway, love it. Just do it. <laughs> check it out if you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean. and then uh, oh, and then we have the uh, Court Warner movie. I forget what it's called. Oh it's yeah, Lovery. Underdog something. Yeah, yeah, American Underdog. I think is what yeah. it is. Which actually yeah, looks pretty good. In November this year, December this year. Yeah, there is. There's plenty. Oh, so yeah. we will be, have the reviews coming, ladies and gentlemen, mm-hmm. and uh, that'll be coming to you. But for now, thanks for joining us. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button, and then share with your friends. Turn on the bell. Like this video. So we can see what you like. Because now I find out the more you like it, the more YouTube tells us, hey, your viewers like this kind of content. Yeah. So hit that like button so we know 
what you guys like to watch, what kind of content you like to hear. And uh, we will be back with another episode very soon. Hopefully tomorrow. We'll see. But, uh, but those were your rapid reviews. Now we are all caught up and we can continue to move forward. All right. See you, everybody. It's good to be back.